<laughs> I was watching your um, your. I paid ten pounds for your download on your website for Bobby Dazzler. A lot of comedians give their uh, specials away for free these days on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, they're not very good ones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've got four friends in uh, who all bought tickets for you uh, oh, did they? for this. Oh, yeah, that pays, so, that pays the yeah, so shut your face. <laughs> Because I said, do you want me to see if I can get your tickets? And they were like, no, no, happy to pay, happy to oh, pay. Man. Happy to pay, not me, 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 to pay. <laughs> Was that good education? Did it show you how to be a comedian? <laughs> <It did. laughs> I've seen your shows before, so it was just the, the same thing again. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I've seen it. <laughs> waiting for oh shit I'm 60 aren't we that's what we're waiting for he's got to have a big birthday before he bothers to write a fucking show I'll just tour with guests that'll be easier <laughs> it's very good Bobby Dazzler thanks yeah so you can get that. You all of the all your shows that you can get download on your website. Right? Uh, various places. Yeah. The first three are on my YouTube, and then there's two that are in various places like Amazon and Sky and stuff. And then the last one is this is the modern way it via is. my website. Very yeah. nice. And Thanks. Yeah, it's good. There's lots of extras. Um, are you taught me some stuff about horses' cocks that I wasn't aware of? Yeah, yeah. You, I didn't did you, know, you didn't know. I that? didn't. I know a lot about cocks, and I didn't know about. Oh, know, maybe there was... you should write another version of your <laughs> no, book and just put, just put an extra chapter in about horses' cocks. <laughs> yeah, there's a lady whose job was to clean horses' cocks. Yeah, um, yeah. There's lots of. I think it's. I don't know if it's all women. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe it is all women, and they have to clean like round the helmet. They yeah. have to clean the. And they're called smeg beans. <laughs> it's true. Uh, if you Google smeg beans and uh, horse and hound, there's an article about a woman who is like talking about her job. Yeah. And, yeah, it's I'm not going to Google it because I don't want that coming up in my search history. <laughs> and then it'll come up on like Facebook ads and yeah. be like, would you like half a pound of smeg beans? <laughs> You're all right, love. I'm not a vegetarian anymore. I mean, I've had, I've had smeg before, but nah, it's never been like a bean. It's never got that bad. Yeah, well, maybe horses don't care as much. They probably don't. You know, I don't think they do. What would happen to them if, I mean, you know, in nature there isn't someone, well, was there like a bird that used to do it in the park? <laughs> <laughs> a reciprocal agreement. What would happen? They would just be, they would just die of cocksmeg, the horse. They wouldn't live. Well, maybe They'd live they long just... enough to breed, get the smeg, die. Maybe they, yeah, but maybe they just pecked it out. You're assuming they ate it. Yeah. Maybe they just pecked it out. Yeah. And then that bird died off and some women were like, I'll have a go with that. <laughs> I think the horses have just convinced women to do it. <laughs> you know, if, if men can work out how to make this happen, that's a game changer. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, horses don't have access to curtains, so they can't just wipe it on a curtain. <laughs> We've already disgusted this audience to the point they can't take any more. That's what they've come for. <laughs> 15 minutes in. Dirty birds. 15 minutes in. What I do love about your shows, and it's because you're, I mean, you're so open about everything in your stand-up. Mm. I think it, that your audience always seem to, like, give you <laughs> absolute... I don't know how much you record that you throw away, but your audience seem to give you absolute gold and just admit to, like, incredible... Th in this show, yeah. there's a man who you talk about um, what... He's got a hot tub, and you'd say, "What? Oh, yeah. What? What would?" What does... So, so the question. Yeah. I have a question in every show, and the question on this show was, um, "What did you do in a moment of madness during the pandemic?" Yeah. And sometimes you just get people saying they shaved their head or they made bread, and you know that's a lot of people did that. But then you get the gold, and then we did two. So you, I don't know when when I record my shows, I do two re yeah. two records, and then you. you I just do one because it's always good. Yeah. Well, the first time. It depends how many people are going to see it. So. <laughs> really harsh but I really enjoyed it um, uh, <laughs> so uh, and you use one as a base and then you add bits in from the other one if I like messed a line up or anything yeah. like that obviously you wouldn't do that because you haven't got it, jokes fun. per se so <laughs> <laughs> am I winning am I, is anybody you doing scores uh, so we had 
and we and on the record you go long on that. So normally I get three, 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 you know, yeah. like a handful, five at the most in total for each show. But on a record, you want to make sure you get the good stuff, so you let it go along. And I think we had nine in the first record that we could have used right. all of them. Because and also because people are I give people thinking time and while other people are answering, they're thinking of their answers. And I think it is because I'm open that they then like, I've got a thing, I'll tell you. And we had a man who was trying to in the whole way through the pandemic was trying to have a two pound shit and you and I thought like cost I didn't know understand at first but it was he weighed himself and his wife was because obviously the camera zo zo zooms in and his wife's like this just with her head in her hands and she knows it's true and we know it's true he was weighing himself before going to the toilet every, and then weighing himself afterwards and he managed to get it he got it he had a two pound shit one day and he told like whatever it was 1300 people that and then everybody who's watched the special and there's there's signs up saying whatever you've seen has been recorded so, so he yeah. knows but yeah. he's fucking proud of that isn't he <laughs> what an achievement but yeah it's it's my favorite bit of every show but also the most terrifying bit of every show yeah because you talk to the audience, because you do normally the, in the first half, don't you talk to them? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Like, yeah, and it's, it's exhilarating, isn't it? But it can also just go... <laughs> you're, you are, I grudgingly have to tell you, you're very good stand-up. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, and I think it is, it is a real testament to you, because it is... Do you ever... Because, I've, I've, you know, you and I both uh, uh, do material which is it's quite full-on and quite honest, often about ourselves. And I think that, again, it is, it is the fact that you do it first, and I think it makes people mm. ha happy to do it as well. Is there stuff that, that's happened to you that you think, oh, that was funny, but it's, that's, I'm, I'm not going to say that on stage? No. <laughs> <laughs> if something's not funny... Yeah. So what I used to do was, if my dad said something funny, I would... Uh, ask him, can I try this out in front of an audience? And he'd go, yes, because of course, why wouldn't you? And then I'd try it out. And sometimes because of the story, because of my setup, whatever, it didn't work. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. And he would ask, did it work? And it, just this sad old man going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to stop doing that. So now I try it out on one audience and if it, it feels like it's got legs then I'll go back to him and I'll ask him and then he always says yes and then because I just I couldn't like it's I've I've taken this on as a job I can take it when things don't work but I can't say that to a lovely old man <laughs> sorry you're not funny dad I can't do it I can't do it but no if something's not funny or if something's too personal I'll try and dance around it so yeah. if I've got a story but the a little bit of it is a bit too much. I'll see if I can tell it without the bit. Because I feel like, I don't because everything, because I'm so personal on stage, I feel like I need to keep a little bit back. And because of social media, everybody knows what everything, you know, where you live and all, all what your house looks like and all that. And I feel like I need to keep a little bit back. But genuinely, if it's really funny, it just goes straight in the show. It's not that much of a like joke slag. <laughs> then I just think, fuck it. I always found the ones that I was most, the ones I felt like most embarrassed or nervous about were always the best ones, though. Oh, the God. ones that I considered not doing. Oh, no. <laughs> were always the but ones. that's why they work. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody knows how much of you you're given for those <laughs> yeah. ones. But, I mean, if you... like, Because your book is incredibly personal, and obviously your next... If you do another, if you do a show about the subject of your book, then that's yeah. going to be incredibly personal. Yeah. But it's, you just get the funny out. You just find the yeah. funny, don't you? And also, doesn't it help like process all the shit things that happened to you yeah i think it does i mean that's what i did that year i did, there was a couple of wobbles obviously where it wasn't where it didn't feel like it was very funny but it, well, I, I realized that that was the way i was gonna cope with it mm. i think it's interesting because like that i got through the first year i think by mainly doing making puppets of my testicle and, mm. and, and doing jokes I've seen about it. it if i close my eyes i can still fucking <laughs> see it <laughs> <laughs> but um, this this second year, I found much more, and maybe it was because I was writing the book, and it was I had to be a bit more serious about it, a bit more thoughtful mm. about it. But also, so you've got, you've got to, to process, put... you've got to actually yeah. process it. So I think comedy helps, but I think if it's a really serious thing that you need to get through, and this wasn't, you know, it was serious, but it wasn't that serious, right? I was never probably never going to die or anything, but it felt like a, you know, it, it was still cancer apparently, um, still counts. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so it was, you know, did, I didn't need to process it a bit. I think, but um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but comedy really helped, yeah. It really helps, and yeah. it helps if you think 
Well, at least I'll get a shot of it. <laughs> Isn't it awful that yeah. that's the way our brains work? <laughs> yeah. Like I had a mammogram and I was like, something funny's going to happen in the mammogram, surely. Nope. <laughs> Just check my tits, tits were fine, went home. And I was really annoyed because it was really, like it wasn't, it was, I thought it was going to be a lot more embarrassing and it wasn't, it was fine because yeah. yeah. they, you know, they see tits all the time, it's not a big deal to them. But I thought something funny's going to come out of this. Nope. But when it does... Then you, not only are you potentially helping other people get through things, but yeah. you're also helping yourself. It's nice. Yes, it is nice. So you know, and, and that was, and by talking about it as well, which I think again, most people's immediate reaction would be not to talk about the things mm. that you and I talk about, and not to talk. You know, if you had an illness like I had to not talk about it, and I had a discussion with Katie, my wife, about whether we were going to talk about it. Her main concern was that Steve Bennett from Chortle would do a headline about it, but he, he didn't give a fuck, he didn't do anything. Uh, but, would you uh, have been sad if he'd just given you one star? <laughs> <laughs> Half a star. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, would you worry about that, that it's going to end up being a story? Yeah, so, yeah. But, it, but then, you know, but it didn't immediately, and you know, obviously it kind of did get in the papers eventually. Uh, but yeah, but by talking about it, I actually got loads of people messaging me about their experience, yeah. which was really helpful. And obviously that by me talking about it, yeah, some people have gone in because of me talking about it. So yeah. that's kind of amazing. If you know, five or six people have isn't that incredible? You know, have gone in and found out something was. I wrong. did a thing a long time ago with. Do you remember Doctor Christian? With lovely yeah. Doctor Christian on the telly, and we did a uh, how to check your breasts for lumps, and we did a video, and they wanted me to be funny in it, and I said. Initially, I said, it'll only be funny if I can have a, like a proper doctor there be doing the proper stuff, and I'll be funny. Like off the back of it, I can't be funny about it. Yeah. So we brought in Dr. Christian and we did this thing and we did it, you know, and it went out and it was fine. And but then every now and again, I'll get a message from somebody. And it's incredible to think that because of that video, yeah. they checked themselves, they found a lump, they went in, they got sorted. They had, you know, potentially a horrible time in the middle, but they're still here. Yeah. And you think that's when you do a thing like that, you just don't really you do it because it's a nice thing to do and it would be helpful to people. But you never it's nice when you get the sort of responses like that where you think fuck yes yeah. and i do say anyone who doesn't buy my book therefore and is really a murderer <laughs> because yeah you know That's they're missing out on the opportunity to, the, to help someone or themselves they might be committing suicide which is a sin I bought against your book. jesus yeah you're fine you're you're safe uh, an early thought, an early brought it to get signed and then i thought how is he going to hold the pen down there though and he's only got the one <laughs> Just, just put a little p on it. <laughs> <laughs>